my channel. My name's Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I've been asked a few times on some of my previous videos if I would just do a little bit of a run through of how I clean my sewing machines and my overlocker. So I thought that I would just do that very, very quickly. So it's going to be a very short video. I get quite a few comments about um, the fact that I'm quite neat and tidy and I seem to have a place for everything and it does make me giggle when I hear that because although I do have a place for everything in my sewing sort of area as it as it were when I'm actually sewing I'm actually really messy and I kind of chuck things all over the place and um, end up with lots of piles of stuff that I need to sort out after I've been sewing. I don't mind that so much because I do have a place <clears throat> for everything once I have finished so it's easy to put those things away and into those areas but while I'm actually sewing I can't be bothered <laughs> to actually put those things away as I'm going so when I'm doing one project everything kind of gets slung <laughs> as I'm going so <clears throat> I've done a sewing room tour before which I'll put a link into up here if you fancy having a watch of that but I don't actually have a room. I've only got the corner of a room, which I very luckily have actually got a desk and everything. So I know I'm very lucky that I've managed to have that and I can have my sewing machines and things permanently set up. Um, and my desk is right next to a windowsill. And I use the windowsill as a bit of an extra shelf, which is really, really helpful. Now in the sewing room tour that I showed before, I didn't have a couple of things which I now have. So for example, I've now got a pegboard, which I find really, really helpful, very inexpensive. Um, and I think I got it from, yeah, I got it from Ikea, which is really helpful. And I've also got a small sideboard, which I can now keep all of my patterns and things in. So I have sort of added to that since I've done that video. But I just thought I would show you sort of how my sewing space looks at the end of one or two projects. So at the moment, I don't have my overlocker on my desk because the last project I did didn't need that. So I've got my sewing machine here, which all needs a little bit of a clean and a sort out. And on my radiator, very fancy shelf that I have here, I have this little plastic box. It was a makeup box, I think, of one of my daughters. They didn't need it anymore. And normally I've got everything in there very, very neat and tidy. But as I've been going, as you can see, look, I've just kind of chucked my threads in there whereas actually I do have a box that I need to go and put those threads into so I'm going to sort that out in a moment and then I have my pegboard which has got various bits and pieces hanging off of it a few bits missing because the things that are missing are all slung on my windowsill so in my last project that I was doing I clearly couldn't find my pin cushion at the time and I've just chucked my pins on there I've got pattern pieces bits that I need to put back away with all the rest of the pattern pieces and I've also got you know bits of uh, fabric which need to be put away so I'm going to have a good old sort out of that this um drawer unit is normally in the center so I normally have that all nice and neat and tidy and I really feel like I don't want to start another project until I've got all of that sorted. Now on the desk that I use I also always try and keep this drawer spare and at the well when I say spare it's normally fairly empty um, but what I do keep in there are my pattern weights because I haven't really got anywhere else to put them some really cute pattern weights that my daughter made me for Mother's Day which is really sweet so in here I've got um, some pattern instructions some interfacing and um, another couple of different types of patterns here which I have all been slung in here um, a bit of old fabric look um, because I was just trying to sort of keep that and um, neat and tidy and put out the way so again amongst all of this stuff that's on my shelf here I need to sort all of this out and put this away I always try and keep this top drawer um, spare and free except for like I say these pattern weights I've I've got a ruler in here so that when I'm working on a project whatever current project I'm working on I can just keep it in here so that it isn't normally strewn all over the place but things have been a bit busy recently and well clearly I've let things get a little bit out of hand so this is the little um, sideboard that I was talking about that I've now got at um, the back of my sewing space and I just keep um, my PDF patterns in here that are all printed out sort of all 
um, if, they, if I've cut them out they're down here and if I haven't cut them out yet and they're just printed they're here and I've got my um, pattern instructions in these folders and some pattern books in there and then on the other side I keep my um, some boxes which have got um, cotton threads and things like that so I'm going to pop those cotton threads away and my overlocker threads in there and then at the bottom now this is <laughs> this is all a bit mucky and messy as well so I've got um, a little bag of interfacing in here so I need to put my interfacing back in there I've also got <laughs> I've also got some more patterns and things like I've obviously just been shoving things away I think it's quite important to show this that I'm not as neat and tidy as everybody thinks I've got some brand new fabric here which hasn't quite made it to my fabric stash and then I've got this box which I keep project bags in so sometimes I'll cut projects out and I'm not quite ready to sew them and I'll just sort of pop them in these project bags so they're all ready and waiting to go and where possible I've got them in there with the thread that I need zips etc etc and the actual instructions I've also got a few things in here that people have asked me to um, repair for them so I've got some trousers to take up some shorts that somebody wants me to fix for their husband so yeah lots of different things like that and then on the top you can see <laughs> with my candle and my plant <laughs> I've got um, another project that's cut out and ready to go but I haven't quite managed to put that in the um, in a project bag yet and there's a sewing magazine and yeah just just all a little bit mucky and a bit messy so I need to have a really good sort out and tidy up of that okay so I've spent a bit of time tidying up and putting away all my bits and bobs so my cupboards are all looking a little bit neater now and uh, yeah just all the patterns are put away and my sewing desk is looking all a lot neater I've also put my overlocker back on my desk so that I can give that a clean too so I'm just going to go through what I do in terms of actually cleaning each of my machines so when it comes to my sewing machine, what I normally do is a series of a couple of things. The first thing I do is I cut my thread from the top and um, obviously just pop my thread away. And the reason I do it like that instead of pulling it up through is apparently it is not good for the machine to have the thread pulled in the wrong direction in um, from what it normally does because it will gather up lint and things like that within the mechanism. So whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I always try and stick to that. So I get rid of my thread in that way. I then take out my needle that I've been using and put that either back in the um, box that it came from. Oh, this one's a bit stiff. Um, or I throw it away depending on how much I've used it. I take my presser foot out and just pop that away in there. And then I take my bobbin thread out of the bobbin section of my machine. Now, what I do is I then kind of work from the top down and it really doesn't take very long and I can't take credit for this because um, I actually got this idea from Tamlin from Sewn on the Tyne. She actually bought a really inexpensive um, uh, makeup brush, uh, totally brand new and clean and she uses that to clean her machines and I've adopted this idea and it just works really, really well. So I just give everything a bit of a brush down um, from inside where the cotton is and just over the top of all the mechanisms and things just to get the general kind of bits of lint and things off that have gathered. I then take my screwdriver that I used to get my needle out a moment ago and I lift up the area around the bobbin and within the bobbin you'll see there is um, a little holder for it now obviously everybody's machine is different and some people will have a um, side bobbin holder so I'm um, you can clean this in exactly the same way but what's really important is to just clean in and amongst all of your bobbin and underneath where your bobbin is kept so this is my brush as it is right now so I've cleaned off all the lint from it there doesn't seem to be anything on it and I'm just going to sweep in there and then you'll see 
how much lint is on there. Now I cleaned this two projects ago and I know that if I didn't clean that eventually it wouldn't uh, sew correctly and it really causes quite a problem and it's more of a problem than, than you think it's going to be. So it's really important to just clean that out very gently, just give it a bit, good old sweep. I wouldn't ever blow into it because you don't want to blow that lint into the machine um, so yeah always just sort of clean it very gently obviously it's still really important that you um, actually get your machine serviced from time to time um, so that somebody can look at it properly make sure that it's oiled up properly I don't ever put oil in my machine because I'm too nervous and don't know whether I'll be putting too much in or too often or what have you so I leave that to the experts so then just pop everything back into place again and everything should slot in really nice and easy and I don't put the needle or the foot or any thread back in I just put it in just as it is like that I then take the back section off so if you're able to take the back section off I just take that off and clean with my brush all underneath there to make sure there's no rubbish which there is because my daughter decided to make me these um, pattern weights and she used couscous of all things I don't know why and I seem to have couscous in every single area on my sewing machine it's quite funny so once I've done that I will then either get a cleaning cloth or a cleaning wet wipe and I will just give the main surfaces of my machine a quick once over um, just to make sure it's all clean and tidy. I would not put this in any of the working mechanisms. This is just purely and simply an on the surface clean off. It's really like it, giving it a dust more than anything. So I just go over all of that and start putting it back together and back away again. So it's all nice and clean with the handle. Clean anything from under there. And then just underneath this section which is obviously a little bit trickier to get to because it's quite small don't forget to give back a bit of a clean like that and then clean off the area that you've just taken off pop that back in together and then once I've done that I'll put its case back on now I have my machine happens to come with a solid case obviously everybody's is different and um, I would quite like to make myself a soft case to go over this because not really for any other reason than I think it'd be nice to have a really pretty patterned cloth case <laughs> not because I think it will protect it anymore because I think this is perfectly adequate but yeah I just give that a bit of a once over and as far as my sewing machine is concerned that is all I do with it in terms of cleaning it um every so often I might actually just pick my machine up off of this mat and give this mat a bit of a clean off as well haven't happened to do that today but that's absolutely fine so I'll stop that there and then I'll show you what I do with my overlocker Okay, so onto my overlocker, and I do exactly the same thing. I actually cut the threads off from the top and remove them that way, as opposed to removing them and sort of pulling the thread back up. I think it would be quite difficult to do that anyway on, on the overlocker. So I just release the um, areas that I need to release so that I can pull that thread out, and then that's all nice and out the way. And then, very slightly different to my sewing machine, um, obviously I'm not going to remove my um, needles, they don't seem to need changing quite as often, I'm sure they do, I've changed them a few times but not very much in the lifetime of my overlocker. But what I do, first of all, my overlocker has got like a little bucket for collecting the cut threads, so I just um, use my makeup brush again just for cleaning that out. Um, you could also wash it obviously as well give all of that a bit of a once over clean down the front of it um, again try not to go into any of the mechanisms of anything so I just sort of clean it all over and I also clean the back where the thread is held as well just because that gets all covered in dust and lint so I can then pop that down oops there you go so that's all 
nice and clean. Now the inside of the overlocker is much much muckier than the um, than the sewing machine so I'm not sure if you can see that in there but it's all really really sort of piled up with um, lint and bits of thread etc and also if you're to open this um, section here you should be able to see in there it's all sort of grey around the bottom and that's all sort of dirty now I have just done this with my makeup brush before but I sometimes get the nozzle of my hoover or um, a handheld hoover and I just before I go over it with my makeup brush have a quick go over it with my hoover so I'll just do that now I'll um I'll try and reduce the sound because it's probably going to be quite noisy So once I've gone over that with my hoover, I'm just going to go over this with my brush, just making sure I get into all those nooks and crannies, but trying really hard not to sort of push into the mechanisms. Now, when you're um, loading up your or threading up your overlocker, they're on mine in particular, it might be different for your overlocker. Once you thread it up one section, you're meant to press this um, to one side to then thread up the next bit. And whenever I do that and I'm cleaning it, it does sort of, um, make a few more bits of lint and cotton jump off so I just go over that when I'm going over all of the um, mechanism here I am literally just going very softly I'm barely touching it at all I'm just literally sort of teasing off any of the rubbish and then once it falls into this section where there's no um, mechanical section then I can really sort of go in and make sure I take out any of the rubbish that's got fallen down so just keep going over it like that I'm then going to go over to the other side just make sure that there's no other extra bits sort of fallen through in there and then I'm gonna clean up this little area of the plastic where it gets sort of caught and I'm actually just shoving it all onto my floor and I'll give my floor a really good hoover in a minute <laughs> so that is um, my overlocker now with my overlocker when I'm giving this a clean I do tend to pick it up and clean off the mat that it's on because that does get very mucky so I'm just going to give that a shake off on the floor like I say because I'm going to give that a hoover in a second and I put that back on there we go and then just like I did with my machine I'm just going to go over the surface areas with um, a cleaning wipe and just make sure that it's all nice and dust free this is more really just to keep it clean and um, dusted rather than actually cleaning the inside of it I would never use this on the inside of the machine so I'm just going over it go over where the threads are kept at the back there we go. and then put everything back in place I took out earlier, give that a little wipe out. Yeah, like so. So it's all back and in place. And then I'll just get my um my makeup brush. I'm just gonna go over that with my wet wipe. Just make sure that all of the bits and bobs that I've collected are out of that and then every so often maybe once every few months I might just pop that into some water and give it a proper clean so that's my brush and I'll pop that away I'll then put my cover back onto my machine and this is the only cover that came with this machine so as you can see that's why I want a nice pretty fancy one <laughs> which I probably will make at some point. So that's the cleaning process that I do of both my overlocker and my sewing machine.
there we go so I've cleaned away all of my desk all ready for the next time that I start sewing I've got my um, empty drawer except for my pins and my pattern weights I've got my windowsill that I use as a shelf all nice and cleaned away and I've also cleaned up um, the little box that I had here that I collected all my bits and pieces in I've put everything back onto my pegboard and it will all get filled up again uh, it's just that it's now all nice and um, free for me to be able to do that so there we have it that's how I end my sewing sessions in a complete mess with everything everywhere and that's how I then sort of give it a good old sort out clean my machines and get ready for the next time that I want to sew it seems silly you don't have to do that I just like doing that because it makes me feel like the next time I go to sew something I don't have anything in my way nothing's stopping me I can just kind of crack on and get on with the next project which is a really nice feeling so I really hope that you found that helpful it's just a very short one today and I will see you next time have a good week everybody bye <music>